It may have been wet and windy this weekend, but the football action was certainly heating up as round 12 kicked into gear. Blackdown City FC and Rockdale were both looking to continue their recent form as they went head to head at Lily Home Stadium, while our match of the round saw City United 58 unveil their new home as they took on Manly United. That's all exclusive to Football New South Wales TV. This is the IGA National Premier League New South Wales Men's One. The Central Coast Mariners recorded their first win for the season last round and were looking to make it two from two as they hosted City Olympic at Plume Park. Despite a quiet opening to the game, it sprung to life in the 35th minute when Zach Elric streamed through the Mariners' defence to slot the ball home with a well-taken goal. Whatever the home side said at half-time worked as they had their best chance of the game in the 47th minute when Dylan Vorster found his way into the box only to see his shot saved by Paul Henderson. They came even closer to equalising just four minutes later when Adam Woodbine leapt above the Olympic defence only for his header to come off the post. Olympic could have sealed all three points in the 62nd minute but Troy Nanaskos played in Amari Gautier who shot cannon off the crossbar. But Sydney Olympic managed to hold on and take all three points, continuing their strong form under their new management. A spirited effort by the home side, but in the end, 1-0 to Sydney Olympic. Bonnie Rig were at home to Arpia Leichhardt as they looked to continue setting the pace at the top of the competition. And Bonnie Rig made the best possible start to ensuring that when Mitch Long opened the scoring in the eighth minute. The lead didn't last for long, however, as Sean Simon equalised for Arpia Leichhardt in the 14th minute. Bonnie Rick took the lead again, though, just seconds before half time. Tynan Diaz restored the lead with this goal. Robbie Eunice almost extended that lead just after the break when he was brilliantly set up by Alex Chanak, but Eunice saw his strike hit the post and stay out. Three minutes later though, Bonnery did make it 3-1 when Alex Mansueto bundled the ball into the back of the net with the ball coming off his chest. Del El Jamal pulled a goal back for the visitors in the 65th minute, breathing some life back into the contest. Adrian Uchino could have delivered the killer blow in the 78th minute, only for his free kick to be expertly saved. In the end though, Bonnery wrapped up all three points, with Mitch Long grabbing his second goal seven minutes before full time. So an entertaining game that saw six goals in all, but in the end, Bonnery four, Arpia Laika two. A local derby of sorts as the Sutherland Sharks took on the South Coast Wolves at Seymour Shore, and it was the home side who got the edge in their opponents early and former Shark Mike Robertson brought down Nathan Alassi. Up stepped Panny Nikas who once again showed his set piece brilliance, turning the free kick into the top corner. Just before half time the Sharks made it 2-0 after Laval felled McMaster in the box. Nikas stepped up once again and promptly dispatched the penalty to continue his goal scoring run. Nikas was everywhere and amazingly almost had a third goal when his vicious in-swinging corner had to be headed off the line by Laval. Nathan Alassie made it 3-0 in the 62nd minute after a nice little dummy from Brad Boardman allowed Alassie to fire home all alone at the back post. The South Coast Wolves did find the scoreboard in the 70th minute when Ricky Zuko reduced the deficit, blasting his shot past Andrew Depter. But in the end, it was simply the Sharks' night with the home side running out victors by three goals to one. 
ensuring they keep the pace with Bonnie Rigg at the top of the table. Blackdown City FC and Rockdale City are two sides that have quietly been climbing the table in recent weeks and both were looking to continue that climb with three points in this one. Ruti Miyazawa had a good chance to open the scoring in the 23rd minute but couldn't control his shot, firing it over the bar. Rockdale let another chance go begging in the 27th minute when Brendan Gann looked clear on goal, only for Brody Crane to save well. Crane was the hero again just before half time when Richard Cardoso's free kick looked set to open the scoring, only for the keeper to pull off a fine save. After missing his earlier chance, Brendan Gann thought he had made amends in the 52nd minute after dinking the ball over Crane, only for the ball to graze the crossbar and stay out. And after all their dominance, Rockdale almost let Blacktown back into the game. After a defensive mix-up, saw the ball bounce dangerously around the box. But finally Rockdale had some reward for their efforts, after Brendan Gann made it third time lucky, heading home well in the 81st minute. That goal proved to be the winner, and Branko Kalina has his men playing some attractive football, which will have plenty of sides looking over their shoulder this season. The Blackdown Spartans travelled to Marconi Stadium looking for three points, but they were slow to get out of the blocks. Evan Berger came close to opening the scoring in just the 11th minute, but his shot was well saved. Berger was left disappointed again just six minutes later, when his close range effort couldn't beat Celia Dare once more. And the Spartans would go up the other end, only for Kato to have his effort saved also. After letting that one-on-one -on -one opportunity slip, Kato was eager to make up for his efforts, but was denied yet again as his header hit the crossbar. The frustration continued in front of goal in the 40th minute when Elsie Barkasi failed to hit the target. It was then the Spartans' turn to let an opportunity slip by when Greg Kondek's shot flew wide in the 55th minute, but the game finally did manage a goal in the 65th minute with a home side winning a penalty. Tash Purcell took on the responsibility despite being so often on the other end of penalty decisions this year, with the defender stepping up and putting the ball away to make it 1-0. Any hope that the Spartans had of managing an equaliser was diminished in the 83rd minute when Corey Bisco saw red for descent, capping off an unhappy night for the Spartans as Marconi ran out 1-0 winners. Before the action kicked off in our match of the round between City United 58 and Manly United, City United 58 cut the ribbon on the new synthetic pitch at the City United Sports Centre. A host of familiar faces had the chance to make first use of the ground in a celebrity game, with names such as Mark Bosnich, Tony Popovich, Ante Milicic, Mark Rudin, Jason Kalina, Robbie Slater, David Drillich, Zelko Kalic and others showing their talents. And with a large crowd on hand and many former City United players watching on, the club were hoping to bounce back after a tough fortnight and open the new ground in style against Manly United. Today was a great day, it was a great day to be here and see all the uh, ex City United players and superstars on TV now strutting their stuff on the new fantastic pitch. Yeah, it was a fantastic day. Like Jelko said, we all grew up here together. Um, it was great to be here on the new pitch here at Denser Park. We'll be here as well next Sunday uh, for the anniversary of the most soft roos ever produced um, by any club uh, in Australia. And I just want to say I've got to hand the match ball to Jelko. He was man of the match and his last goal, I know he's got it, it was fantastic Jelko. Fantastic mate. Fantastic. Yeah, Uh, like great fond memories, obviously uh, a lot of the guys that went through the national team together uh, started off here and uh, not just with football but great friendships. Uh, we're all 40 plus years now and uh, we're still all great mates. Yeah, we used to come up here I think every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday and uh, train with our heroes like Greg Woodhouse, Steve Watson, uh, Tony Arnold. Frank, Graham Arnold, Robbie Slater, Manus Lamont, Wally Savile, David Rezzo who you saw here today. Sorry if we left anyone out. And Petra Rosic as well, who was a massive hero of all of ours. And it was a very important time as well. 
during the 90s as well for, for our people in general. And uh, we worked very hard. And Jock and I, being both goalkeepers, pushed each other to the hilts. And uh, probably one of the reasons why we went so far because of Ron Corey. Why are we still mates? I don't know. We're supposed, <laughs> we're supposed to be competing for the same jersey. We shouldn't be mates. Same blood. <laughs>
you know, I thought the back four were, were, were very good today, solid. And uh, look, overall, a good solid performance. Happy with the point. On another day, we could have nicked three points. They're them having the men sent off in the first half. You probably expect us to kick on, but they are a strong side. You know, they've got some good players out there, and and it was just hard for us to find the extra man and and, and kick on and find that goal, which didn't come. And we've always said that you know, if you if you go out and you play well and you get beaten by the better team, fair enough. But you know, last week was pretty disappointing. Obviously, losing to Blacktown and and the weeks before that, you know, we had three games where we conceded goals late to take points from us. So you know, we had to get back to the the basics today of defending well, which I thought we did, and and we just got to refine the attack a little bit now and hopefully get uh, get. Some some goals which will get us points. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, it's never easy, um, you know, against a team like Manly. Um, but I mean, sort of the run we're having at the moment, we really need to uh, just stick together and do the uh, do the hard work on on the pitch and, and hope things turn around for us. But I mean, it doesn't help when obviously you go down go down a man so early in the game. I mean, that really took a bit of wind out of us. But in saying that, the the, the attitude and the commitment from every player was, uh, you know, you can't fault. And if we keep doing things like that, I'm sure the results will start to come for us. You know, it's boys work really hard. Like Tricky said, um, we knew today everyone was. We didn't need motivation. We've recent our recent form, you know, wasn't the best, but we knew that as a team we had to stick together. Um, especially what happened early on, you know, in the game, a red card for two weeks in a row. Now, you know, we um, stuck really, stuck really well together. I mean, it was it was a shame that you know we couldn't provide a win for us, for the boys, the supporters and you know everyone around the club um, it's also a great day for Sydney United and everyone involved. We're looking at the results now for round 12 for the competition the Sydney Olympic put an end to the Central Coast Mariners Academy's winning run with a 1-0 win at Plume Park. Bonnerig White Eagles continued their run at the top of the table with a convincing 4-2 win over Arpia Leichhardt. The Rockdale City Suns edged out Blacktown City FC with a 1-0 win at Lily Home Stadium and the surprise of the round was the lack of goals in our match of the round, with City United 58 having a scoreless draw with Manly United. Well, we take a look at the ladder now, and it's Bonnie Rig out on top on 29 points, two points clear of the Sutherland Sharks in second. Rockdale City Suns continue their fine form, they're in third place. Plenty of sides still in the race for the finals, although it's getting difficult for the sides at the lower end of the ladder. With the South Coast Wolves, Arpi Leichhardt Tigers, and Central Coast Mariners Academy starting to lose touch with finals places. Well, we take a look at the fixtures now for round 13 of the competition and the round starts on Saturday night with the Central Coast Mariners Academy taking on fellow strugglers Arpia Leichhardt at Plume Park. The Blacktown Spartans were looking to add another big scout to their record this season and they take on the Bonnie Rig White Eagles at Blacktown Football Park. Their Blacktown neighbours will travel down the coast when they take on the South Coast Wolves at John Cream Park. Manly United take on Marconi at Cromer Park on Sunday afternoon. And Rockdale City take on City United 58 at the Alinden Sports Centre. Well, that's all we have time for for this week's show. Make sure you tune in next time for our match of the round between Sydney Olympic and the Sutherland Sharks. See you then. Football New South Wales would like to thank its sponsors, IGA, Subway, Coca-Cola, Elastoplast, Foxtel, Hummel and Nike, the official ball sponsor, of the IJ New South Wales National Premier League's Men's One.